Good morning, folks, and welcome to Stock Charts Today. This is Bob Desmond at The Contrarian Trader, and we made it through the Stormy Daniels interview last night on 60 Minutes. So here we are. We live to play another day through another scandal. Once again, the Clintons vis-a-vis -vis Rahm Emanuel reared their ugly heads on uh, the 60-minute interview last night. I think Anderson Cooper did a fairly good job of revealing her attorney's connections with the thugs in the so-called elite of the country. So let's get to what really matters, and what matters is the markets for us today. We're going to kick things off with what happened overnight. We saw the launch of the Petro One overnight. What does that mean? It means that for the first time since the 1970s, you have a serious exchange that is now trading oil contracts through not the U.S. dollar, but through the Chinese yuan. And this will give the Chinese some leverage over the Saudis in terms of pricing. Don't forget, the Chinese import much of their oil. And it appears as though the Petro One is trading in tandem with the contracts for West Texas Intermediate Crude. So keep an eye on the U.S. dollar. While this is not an immediate threat, there were only 23,000 tr contracts traded in the first hour yesterday, but that, that volume is going to expand. So it may not be a immediate competitor with the petrodollar, the psychological impact is undeniable. Let's get to the chart of the dollar. Let's see how it's behaving in light of the news. Now remember, before we go to that chart, the dollar closed out the week last week, very weak, and I even put out commentary over the weekend on best stock charts, and I subtitled it U.S. Dollar Crisis. Go check it out. I'll link to it at the end of this video. Okay, uh, we have a problem here. Four-hour chart. These are all be four-hour charts. If you're not a member, I'll review the four-hour charts here. If you're looking for our strategy for how we plan on trading this coming week, become a member and go check out the Week Ahead commentary, which is posted in the members area. And we discussed in great detail how the markets are looking, what our strategy is for the coming week, and getting back to the U.S. dollar, we are weak and getting weaker. And we are threatening to break down below critical support. The price to watch here, folks, is this 88.25 level to 88.14. If we break down below that level, there's a big air pocket that needs to get filled before we find a new support on the U.S. dollar. So thus far this morning, we have a bearish key reversal on the day a new weekly low, and we are threatening to take out support. So the dollar continues to weaken. Let's check out the price of gold. The last I look, it was down on the session. Yep, and we remain down. We're off the lows of the session. But let's remember why we are off the lows of the session. We closed out last week at resistance. And again, this is a four-hour chart. So what we're looking for here is a breakout above this upper band of resistance but keep in mind that we have resistance immediately above about nine dollars above where we're trading right now at 1356.6 but if the dollar continues to break we could be on the verge of a major breakout in gold we're not there yet we're close but we've been close before so just be careful with entering your positions we have a strategy already developed we're going to stick with that strategy. We've already been long of the gold miners for a while now, and we plan on adding on strength and closes above significant resistance levels. Let's take a look at the currencies that are commodity producers. Why does that matter? It matters because it, it'll show us whether or not those commodities are under accumulation because the strength of the currencies will reflect that accumulation. And you could see that the Aussie dollar has formed a double bottom, a higher low, and we are poised for a breakout above this upper band of resistance. We're not there yet. I wouldn't go buying the Aussie dollar. The Canadian dollar, it has broken out. 
We broke out here on the 21st, and we are poised for a continuation move higher. So what the Aussie dollar and the Canadian dollar are doing for us is that they are validating our bullish opinion on commodities. Let's take a look at the major currencies, the euro. Very strong this morning. Breaking out. And we are breaking out to new weekly highs and very close to a monthly high. Actually, we are at a monthly high. I stand corrected. The Japanese yen, we are setting up for a continuation breakout here. In fact, we rallied to a new high overnight, week over week, but we pulled back. So what we're looking for here is a breakout and above this upper band of resistance. Once we clear the overnight high, it's off to the races. I think that the dollar is seeing pressure not only on the commodity currency fronts, but also, and more importantly, versus the major currencies of which it competes, the Japanese yen and the euro. Taking a look at the 10-year bond price, not the yield, but the price, you can see that we are down now. We were higher, and we're putting in a lower high here. No breakdown yet to a lower low on a four-hour chart. Now, if we break down yet again, that means that yields will be pressed higher. And we're seeing some strength in the major averages, the stock market major averages here in the United States. They will come under pressure. So watch this chart. Last week, the 10-year yield was very bearish. We do have a new weekly high on price overnight, but it's given up those gains. So the bond market is at a tipping point right now. Let's check out the 30-year bond price. Yeah, same deal here. We were higher. We pulled back overnight. This could be a consolidation, but if we break down below the support level here, you should expect pressure on yields higher, and that will mean, in all probability, some pressure on the major U.S. stock indexes. Let's kick things off with the S&P 500 and take a look at how stocks are behaving in the pre-market, or futures anyway. All right, so here's the deal. We are, we are having a strong morning. We are up 1% in the pre-market, and we have broken out above the upper band of resistance here, marking these prior lower highs on the S&P 500 in recent days. And we bounced off of a key support level. What the S&P 500 is going to do right now, given where it closed out the week last week, is that we are very close, perilously close, to taking out the February lows. If that occurs, we will have seen a double top, a lower high, and a confirmation breakdown. So we have a strategy for adding to shorts here. We discussed it over the weekend. I would not be a buyer of stocks this morning. And don't let these guys on CNBC and Bloomberg take a parking space in your head and tell you that it's all over now. The sell-off is all over. It is not over. We have not seen the lows yet. This type of price action is not what lows are made of. If we were to wake up and we would have seen futures down... 50, 60 points on the S&P futures, then I could have thought about, you know what, maybe we should step in here and buy the weakness. But that's not the case. They want you, meaning the thugs on Wall Street, to go buying strength so they could sell. Don't fall victim. And don't get me wrong, this rally could go on for another day or so. The NASDAQ composite at least the NASDAQ 100. It too is rallying this morning up about one and a third percent on the morning. We have broken out above resistance. Let's see whether or not we close there. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, same deal here. A strong morning. We are up nearly a percentage point and we have broken out ever so slightly. We don't have a closing breakout yet on any of these indexes. So let's just be careful here this morning, folks. Remember, 
two weeks ago, every day, I warned. The futures were bright green. I warned, watch out for the fade. And every single day, they faded the rally into the open. Don't fall victim. Let's leave off with Bitcoin. We haven't spoken about Bitcoin in about a week. And not much has happened, really. Somewhat lethargic trade here. It appears as though we're consolidating here on Bitcoin. In fact, were you speculative and you were looking to buy, we're down about 2.9%. If you wanted to buy at these levels, I'd be okay with it. As long as you put a stop in right below this lower band support, at let's call it 8,100 thereabouts. Get your crayon out, have your chart at the ready, draw your trend line. And exit quickly. And if we break out above this upper band of resistance here, at let's call it the 8,500 level, we'll probably rally up to this 20 period moving average, which has acted as a ceiling before, but it's also acted as support. So watch for a break above the 20 period moving average. If it, if it does break out, I'm using a four hour chart. Remember folks, it matters. If we break out and above this 20 period moving average and it begins to rise, right now it's in a decline, that's a good thing. We may see a rally up to this upper band of resistance at just shy now of the 9,000 level. So keep an eye on Bitcoin. It's consolidating. But watch for a break down below this lower band of support. If it breaks, we're going to challenge the prior lows last seen back on the 15th. And there's a good chance that it breaks. Folks, let's segue now into member stock chart requests. This is where we review the symbols that our gold members submit for me to review. And as a reminder, please, this is just a gentle nudge for members. If you're long or thinking about getting long of any of these symbols that I'm about to go over, please enter the symbol on the commitment channel, soon to be renamed. For those not familiar with what that is, that is the area in the members area in the forum, to be specific, where we input our symbols and we declare where we plan on stopping out. And it's incumbent upon the membership to hold people accountable. I've been held accountable for stopping out and keeping those losses small. That's how we live to play another day. Let's get to the charts. Amazon, AMZN. We're going to begin with a weekly chart. We have a double top on RSI, a lower high. We're rolling over on Stokes. Double top and lower high on Money Flow. Last week, we let's just say we closed at support. I want to pay Amazon a little bit of respect because unlike the rest of the market, Amazon has shown relative strength versus the S&P 500. And since the February lows, unlike the S&P 500, Amazon, along with the NASDAQ, have gone on to new all-time highs. But it appears as though Amazon is now losing steam. We have lower highs on Stoke RSI. Volume uh, for the past two weeks has been very high, so we're seeing institutional distribution. If the market weakens up this week, it's my bet that Amazon will begin to trade down along with it. Let's take a look at the daily chart. All right, so on a daily basis, we broke a support level. We have a lower high and a lower low. Uh, so we have the beginnings of a downtrend. The path of least resistance is now changing from up to down. So me personally, where I long of the shares, I would stop out on a new weekly low, especially if the market is following suit to the downside. We have RSI making lower highs and lower lows now, along with Stokes, and volume is rising sequentially. So you're seeing institutions begin to lighten up on Amazon. So I would be a profit taker of these shares on a continuation move lower into the new trading week and I would not be a buyer of the shares and they could quite soon become a short more to come members on that call SRPT Sarepta Therapeutics weekly chart an inside week last week no week, no new high no new low the prior week we had a what appears to be a blow off top of sorts 
We rallied right up into the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. It read exactly where it's not supposed to be. And the sellers moved in, book profits. And last week, you could see that the shares stalled out. Now, in this market environment, me personally, if I see price action like this, I'm booking profits and raising cash because the probability of a pullback is fairly good. Now, overall, the bull run is still intact. So if this is a long-term investment, you may not want to go selling your shares. But if you're trading these shares, think about booking some profits, at least half your position on a new weekly low daily chart. All right, so on a daily basis, we are in a pennant formation. And, and your parameters of as to when you should stop out or add to your position are clear and defined as noted by the upper band of resistance and the lower band of support. If we break down and close below 77.11 as a trader, I would be looking to book my profits had I enjoyed this rally higher. If the shares break out and above the upper band of resistance and you see the markets recovering along with the healthcare sector, well, then you may want to look to add more, assuming that we close above this upper band of resistance. So it's well defined here, a breakdown below support and a close there, meaning at 3.55 Eastern Standard Time, SRPT is trading down below $77.11. I would be out of the position. If we rally up and above $80 per share and we close there, I would look to add more with a stop right down below this what should be, if you decide to add, a support level. If that fails, I would stop out if we break back down into this trading range because that would be a breakout point failure or a bull trap. The next chart up, Arena Pharmaceuticals, ARNA. Weekly chart, an amazing reversal week last week. I'm not sure if there was news. I haven't checked. But the one thing that does concern me is that the week prior to last, we broke down. And we broke down hard below this lower band of support. Now, buyers stepped in at the $30 per share level, which has been prior support. But you could see that when we rallied last week, the shares could not close clearly above this resistance level here. And let's call it $41.92 per share. We, we closed at $41.88. So what would I do here? You know, it's a bullish chart on a weekly basis. The reversal week is undeniable. The fact that the prior week we had broken down and last week we couldn't close back above support is a concern. So how do we fit this square peg into a round hole? What do we do? Well, what I would do is I would defer to the daily chart. This is a volatile stock, and I would give it some room. If you have a big profit in it, maybe book some of those profits, but... If you're looking for a stop loss point, I would use a close below $39 per share right here. When would I add? I would add more on a rally and a close above $45 per share to $46 per share. Now, the RSI is in a clear and defined downtrend. Stokes are putting in lower highs and lower lows. Volume to the upside has been high, but it's also been high to the downside as well. Ultimate oscillator, lower highs and lower lows. So ARNA, it's not an easy one to make a call on here. So what to do? Write down your parameters. Commit to stopping out on a breakdown below this lower band of support. I wouldn't be a buyer where we closed out the day on Friday. If you're not currently long of the position, I would not be a buyer on Monday morning until one of two things occurs. One, a pullback and a retest of support and what would appear to be an apparent close above it. Meaning, wait till the final few minutes of trade. That final half hour of trade is everything. Don't go buying shares prior to the final minutes of trade so that you can ensure that you're not going to get whipsawed on the trade. Meaning, if the shares rally in the morning, you go chasing them. By the end of the day, they are trading down on the day. That destroys confidence, not to mention what it does to your portfolio. If we don't get the pullback to the support level, I would wait for the breakout above $45 per share to $46 per share. And I would add more on pullbacks and continuation breakout patterns. Etsy, 
On a weekly basis, we flashed a bearish Q reversal last week, putting in jeopardy support at, let's call it $26 per share. Daily chart. First, let's check out volume. Volume was high last week. Okay. So we put in the top at 29.15 and we broke down below support. So we have a breakout point failure here. I would not be a buyer of the shares until we were able to either A, recapture support or B, until we pulled back and retested $25 per share and we'd see whether or not those shares hold at that level. Now, as it stands right now, we have a breakout point failure, meaning that we had broken out on the 9th. We rallied, pulled back, retested, attempted to rally once again, pulled back and failed to hold support. So what happens in times like these is that in all probability, we're going to pull back and retest $25 per share. So if you want to avoid taking that ride down, you may want to look to stop out of at least half your position on a breakdown below this lower band of support in dotted blue. And that just ha so happens to coincide with the 20 period moving average, which is at 26.53. We closed at 26.64. Volume was very high on Friday, above average. So these shares are certainly under pressure. Preserve capital, weight watchers. Let's begin with the RSI and Weight Watchers. We're pressuring the lower band of support, but no breakdown yet. Lower highs, but still no lower lows yet. But if we break down below this lower band of support and we close out the week below this level, I wouldn't want to be long of these shares. The stochastics appear to want to hook back up, which is pretty interesting after we put in a bearish key reversal last week. We did not break support. But we have the potential for a double top, a lower high. When would I stop out of this position? If we close out the week below this lower band of support, I would be out of the position. Let's go to a daily chart. All right, we have a head and shoulder setup forming. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder forming. Here's our 45 degree neckline. I wouldn't want to wait to see whether or not that neckline gets breached. I would rather do this. If we appear poised to close down below $61 per share, I would be out of the position. And honestly, I don't like this rally back here. It's very, as I like to call it, ticky-tack. Not a lot of conviction, a lot of chopping action. Volume to the downside was not that high last week. So my line in the sand would be, on a close below $60 per share. When would I add? If we manage to rally and close above $69.09, .09, I would scratch the edge. I would open up a small position. But I really wouldn't be a buyer, an aggressive buyer of Weight Watchers until it broke out to new highs, honestly. There's far too much resistance above here. And the market far too weak right now. Square, weekly chart, a bearish key reversal last week. This has been a mover. And it has shown relative strength up until last week, much like Amazon. Volume last week rose. Take a look at your ultimate oscillator. Lower highs, no lower lows yet. Let's go to the daily chart. All right, so me personally, if we close down below $50 per share, I'd be out of this position. Now, at some point in time this week, we're going to get a rally in the markets. That may keep Square up along with Amazon, along with any other name I just went over. But don't get lured into a false sense of security. I think that longer term, this market has further downside. I would use rallies to lighten up on this position if you have a nice profit. Because given the bearish reversal week last week, that's a concern. PayPal, weekly chart. All right, we have a lot of things going on here. Uh, we have lower highs and lower lows on RSI. Stokes are rolling over. This is all bearish stuff. We have a head and shoulder setup forming on price, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Here's the neckline here at about $74 per share. If we make a new weekly low, in all probability, we're coming down to that level. So were we to make a new weekly low, you may want to lighten up on some of your position. And if we close down below this lower band of support, I would be out of the position 100%. Volume last week was quite high. I would not be a buyer 
of these shares right now. Daily chart. Yeah, we're another head and shoulders setup here. We are threatening to take out resistance. And if we do, here's your 45 degree neckline. I would not be a buyer of these shares, and they soon may very well be a short. Be careful. Lower highs in RSI, lower highs in the breakdown on Stokes. This this chart is no bueno, man. I would not go shorting it right now, though. It is not broken. STM, microelectronics, a bearish key reversal last week. We have lower highs and lower lows on RSI. Same deal on stochastics. So the trend is not right for longs on the RSI and stochastics. We remain in a trading range, a long-term trading range. It's been in this range since last September, October. But the problem here is that we broke down below a key support level back during the week of January the 29th. We pulled back, rallied, unable to break out to new highs. Now we're reversing. So in a case like this, I'm thinking, what's my exit strategy as always? We put up our lower band of support. If we break down below, let's call it $22 per share, and we close there, I would be out of the position on a weekly basis. Volume last week to the downside was not high. So you may want to give this one some room. Let's check out the daily chart. All right, so we have a breakdown on Stokes, lower high, and a confirmed breakdown. Same deal here on RSI. Price is still holding in there. But again, we see a breakdown below support. I said $22 per share before, I believe. I would raise that up. If we close down below this lower band of support at like 2240, I would be out of the position. Now, if we break out and above 2512, I would add to the position. But just keep your pulse on the market. Volume last week was high, Thursday and Friday. So we had sequentially declining up volume. Then it was met with rising down volume. That's not good. So we have a caution flag on the track here for STM. China Auto Logistics weekly chart. A lot of volatility on this one. All right, so we have RSI, which is rising, and it broke out last week, as did price. Stokes are beginning to hook up, but they're down below the 50 level, which I'm always suspect of because rallies tend to fade, as we saw last week. It rallied, and we sold off the highs of the week, but still a respectable week. We closed up, Jesus, 47 and a three quarters percent on the week, a massive move. Now we are trading at current above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. It's very volatile. What would I like to see here were I not long and looking to open up a position? I would be looking for a pullback and a retest of the prior breakout point at $4 to $4.15 per share. If we get that pullback, I would buy aggressively with a stop right down below it. So I keep my risk very small because if we close back down below the support level here, that's a breakout point failure or a bull trap, and I wouldn't want to touch it. I would want to be out. Now, would I go buying with the shares this extended? That's a tough one. Probably not. Volume was great last week. I would need to take a look at a daily chart. All right, so no, I wouldn't be. By the end of business today, the shares will be trading down below the 50 level on Stokes. Now, these Stokes should be rising. Why aren't they rising? It's because you're seeing a lot of selling pressure move in to this strength. So that makes me suspect of this rally. So would I be a buyer here? No. I think that we're pulling back on Cali, and that pullback is going to be a healthy thing. And I would defer back to my commentary with regards to the weekly chart Expect a pullback and a retest and probably a filling of this gap, which would make for a good risk-reward entry point. Volume outstanding. So we're in an early stage breakout here. It looks like the shorts are getting crushed, but new shorts are leaning in and profit takers are leaning in as well. Let's go back to the weekly. Do we have a lot of overhead supply? Let's go to a monthly chart. Oh, yeah. And we have buyers from back here who have been holding through this mess 
who have watched CALI sit as a red entry on their trading screens for months, years. And now it just turned green. They want their money back. They're not looking for a profit. But I love this base that it's breaking out of. Really nice. But you do have overhead supply. But I like the chart. I think we should track it. So Cali, longer term, looking good. Short term, I would allow it to pull back. Get in under your own terms. Watch that $4 to $4.15 level. Put a stop right underneath, and you're all good. And that's it for today, folks. Everybody have a profitable trading day. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you watch this on YouTube. Leave a comment below, and be well.